photographically in those days, because of the restrictions of the economy, you couldn't buy cameras, film was very restricted. So, you know, press people had cameras because newspapers were allowed to import cameras. But if you were an individual, it was very difficult to access cameras because sales of, you know, imported, I mean, cameras were all made abroad, either in Germany or in Japan or in the US or England. And after the early 1960s, uh, most of that import stopped. So it was really, a, in a sense, an elite. Uh, I mean, you had to come from a socially and economically fairly well-off background to even get a relative to sneak in a camera through customs because the duties were so high. So that was a huge restriction and, it, it, you know, it limited the field. Uh, it limited the practitioners enormously. Also processing film, uh, access to film was very difficult, especially if you wanted to use color film, Kodachrome, uh, color processing. Uh, hardly happened in India. It was very, very limited. So after the uh, liberalization, there was a sea change and it happened within a few years. The difference that happened, we didn't have access to books, say photography books, easily. I mean, there were, even in libraries, you know, you didn't have access to really a history of photography. And a few books that friends had, we would share amongst each other. So it wasn't just, uh, you know, uh, uh, the lack of access to equipment or to lenses which mattered, but it was also a kind of disconnect from the larger world of photography outside. And that is, of course, something that I got exposed to enormously uh, in the U.S. But coming back, you know, my interest in doing exhibitions on Sunil Jana from the 1940s or Madan Mahata from the 50s and 60s was because of that, because I realized we didn't have our own histories. And this work was not in, out in the public, not seen by the younger generation of photographers, actually even older generation of photographers, because we didn't have a lot of exhibitions. You know, these had limited circulation, especially specialized areas of photography. So that was, you know, something I was very, very aware of. And I, of course, having had a foot in the US, was very privileged. I, because of my architecture connection, professionally, my earning as a photographer became architectural photography. And I specialized in that, and I had to get specialized equipment for that. I had to get a view camera, you know, special lenses, backs, all of which were smuggled in because I couldn't, no one could afford to pay, you know, those huge duties at that time. Job opportunities have opened up quite a bit. You know, there are photographers now who can earn doing fashion photography. People are spending for weddings much more. They hire photographers for weddings now. They did at that time, but it's become much, much more uh, the done thing now. So even if you have somebody who's relatively poor, they will hire a photographer to shoot their wedding in a basti in Delhi, etc. So uh, industrial photography has expanded a lot. At that time, you know, like Madan, etc., there were just a handful of photographers. Now, of course, many, many more. But if you're talking about institutionally in terms of art support, that also changed. See, the other thing with photography is that we didn't have a lot of exhibitions, very, very few in the 50s or the 1960s because it was something very expensive to do. So unless you had funding to do big prints, to do framing, you know, these things people forget that we didn't even have proper framing uh, in those early years. I remember when I did my first show in Delhi in 1986, I had to have the frames built by hand. You see, the few ph photographers who did books in the pre-liberalization days, like uh, Raghubir Singh or Raghu Rai, etc., they were really expensive books, which most of us couldn't buy. Uh, you know, the middle class couldn't really afford those books. They were really aimed at the tourist market. And therefore, it also, uh, the nature of the books was oriented towards that. So they had a slightly orientalist you know, feel of looking at the exotic India, the sadhu India, the village India, etc. in those days. That, of course, has completely changed. So even the, you know, the aesthetic 
or how people now look at India as practitioners has also changed because the field has opened up because of the because there is now an economic base which allows that to happen.